Hello everyone and welcome to this YouTube tutorial which is going to be focusing on the relationship between health, fitness, exercise and performance today. Although you'll be quite familiar with those four terms, with regards to GCSE PE we need to delve in them in a little bit more detail. So today we're going to be looking at the key definitions of health, fitness, exercise and performance and what they actually mean. We're also going to be looking in detail what is specifically involved in each aspect of all those four areas. And we're going to analyse how each one can positively and negatively affect the other. So we're going to start with a little task. All I would like you to do is take a look at these four images and see if you can attribute which one is health, which is fitness, which is exercise and which is performance. If you stop the video now, have a go at that. Right, hopefully you've had a go at that and we'll take a look now which picture attributes to the correct definition. So firstly, we have the family up at the top there enjoying a nice meal. That would be closely linked to health. The ice climber attempting to climb up that ice wall would be called fitness. This couple taking a nice leisurely walk in the countryside would be exercise. And the young lady at the top finishing a race would be performance. Now, don't worry if you didn't necessarily get those the right way around, because what we're going to look at now is how each one of those pictures closely links to the definition of health, fitness, exercise and performance. So starting with health, health is a state of complete physical, emotional and social well-being. And it's not merely the absence of disease and infirmity. Infirmity relates to physical or mental weakness. So when we're talking about health, we include three aspects. And it's really important. P-E-S. P stands for physical health. So this relates to the body. So is the individual at the correct weight? Are they having, or do they have any disease or infection within their body? Or are they struggling from any physical health issues? The next thing looks at emotional health. So this primarily refers to the brain. So the emotions that the person generally experiences on a day to day basis, are they happy, have they got depression, have they got anxiety? And lastly, we look at social health. So this is anything outside of the body. So we look at the individual's family, friendship group, finances, income, job security, education. So health is not basically just the physical aspects, but it's also the emotional and the social. So when we look at health, we think about it in a triangle and we look at all three aspects. So if we start with the gentleman on the left hand side, who's currently enjoying some television. He's happy. He's got a big friendship group. He's got a nice home. He's got a comfortable income, but he's clearly overweight. So if we were to assess that individual's health, we would say that he's unhealthy at the moment due to his weight. Not anything else, purely just to his weight. The next picture, which is the young lady who's doing some work at home, again, you might look at her and think, well, she looks the correct way, which she is. She's happily married in this instance. She's got two children. She's got a skilled job, but she has very high stress levels, which affect her emotional health. So again, we could categorize that this individual isn't healthy because of that emotional impact that she's suffering with. And lastly, we have a professional athlete. And you'd obviously think a professional athlete has to be healthy, but... When we take all three aspects into it, professional athletes, extremely fit, lives in a very big home, drives a very nice car, but doesn't have a friendship group. So it's quite lonely, quite isolated. And again, if we take into consideration the three aspects of health, this obviously impacts the social element, not having a friendship group. So again, can be deemed as being unhealthy. So it's really important we take into consideration the physical, emotional and social health. Now, fitness, we've talked about fitness before when we've looked at the components of fitness. But the general definition of fitness is the ability of an individual to meet the demands of an environment. And that environment will change depending on each individual's circumstances and what their everyday requirements are. For example, if we take this individual here who has an office job, the level of fitness required to meet that environment is relatively low as long as she can walk to work climb the stairs potentially have the concentration to sit at the desk and work then she would be classified as meeting the demands of that environment 
However, if we take a recycling job where it's quite a physical and demanding job where they've got to go out and collect bins, place them on the truck, then obviously these individuals would need a different level of fitness to meet the demands of that environment. And lastly, if we take a professional sports star, the demands of their environment are obviously very different to the other two. So their fitness requirements have to be much higher to meet what is asked of them on a day to day basis. Looking at this in more detail in relation to sport, if we take these two individuals here and looking at how they meet their demands of their environment, we've got the sumo wrestler and in order to meet the demands of an environment, they've got to be in the correct physical condition for that specific sport. So we're talking about body shape, body size and specific components of fitness, such as body composition, power, strength. On the opposite side, we've got Conor McGregor, who's a mixed martial arts fighter. Clearly, they have very different physical shapes, but equally, they're all going to have a different psychological aspect to this to consider. So they've got different rules that they have to have a full knowledge of, different tactics, different strategies. Do they have the mental toughness required to compete in that sport? Both the physical and psychological aspects need to be considered when we're talking about somebody meeting the demands of an environment. Now, exercise is any physical activity which is undertaken or participated within in order to maintain or improve health and fitness. It is not competitive sport. So taking part on a Sunday for your local football or rugby team is not exercise. OK, that will come later on when we look at performance. Exercise is anything which is done to improve health or fitness. So attending a training session on a Tuesday or a Thursday in preparation for your game could be classified as exercise. Now, what I would like you to do here, we've got a couple of tasks. I would like you to identify two physical health benefits of exercise, so two benefits to the body. I'd like you to identify two emotional benefits of exercise, so the brain. And I would like you to identify two social benefits of exercise. If you pause the video now, make a quick list, so you should have six in total, physical, emotional and social benefits of exercise. Right, hopefully you've done that. We're going to come on to that in a moment. But I have one final task that I'd like you to consider as well. I would like you to explain, using a sporting example of your choice, how exercise can improve fitness. And remember, fitness is meeting the demands of an environment. So pick a sport of your choice or pick an athlete and try and explain how exercise can improve the fitness of that particular athlete or within that particular sport. OK, let's see how you did then. So these are just a couple of examples of benefits of exercise, starting with physical. Clearly, doing exercise will improve specific components of fitness. OK, now that is one answer on its own. What you couldn't put down is improve cardiovascular endurance, improve speed, strength. OK, because they're all the same thing. Improve specific components of fitness. It will also reduce your chance of sustaining any kind of injury, illness or disease. It reduces the chances. It doesn't eliminate completely. And it also allows an individual to maintain the ideal composition. OK, the ratio of body fat to non body fat. So they're all physical benefits. The emotional benefits of exercise are enjoyment. And we've talked about serotonin being released before, OK, which is a chemical that makes people feel good. Exercise can relieve or prevent stress and anxieties, and it can also increase self-esteem and confidence. And lastly, the social benefits of exercise. So generally, a lot of people exercise for the top one to make new friends or to socialize with others. Exercise can also develop life skills like respect, teamwork, discipline. And equally, exercise can potentially lead to somebody pursuing a career in sport. Clearly, if you're a professional sports star, you need to exercise. And one of the benefits of that is that you can create a career out of it. The last task where I asked you to discuss how exercise can improve fitness, I've used Mo Farah here. Now, clearly, Mo Farah takes part in a lot of exercise, all right? And he does so to improve his cardiovascular endurance. By improving his cardiovascular endurance, it means he can work his whole body for long periods of time. As a result of that, he can then perform significantly better in his events such as the 10,000 meter and marathons. By performing better, he is meeting the demands of his environment. The environment is the marathon or the 10,000 meters. 
By exercising, he's improving his ability to meet those demands. Now, performance, this is the last thing that we're looking at. Performance is how well a task or action is completed. Now, this might be in relation to sitting an exam, which most of you have done. You perform an exam. It might be doing a dance performance or it might be performing in sport. So did you achieve the intended outcome of the task? Did you complete it as efficiently as possible? Or were there any errors which affected the outcome? So performance is how well a task or action is completed. So what we're going to try and do now is link each of those four aspects to a particular sports star and show you how each one can subsequently affect the other. So starting with health, obviously this netball player ensures that she has a good level of body composition, she has a good diet, and that allows reduced levels of illness or disease, which in turn allows her to play netball and enjoy socialising with others. As a result of having good health, okay, she is physically fit, she's emotionally fit, she's socially fit, and therefore she can meet the demands of being a professional netball player, which exactly is what fitness is about. In turn, by having a good level of health and by meeting the demands of her environment, she's able to exercise. And by being able to exercise, she'll improve her physical, emotional, social health, as well as her fitness. So you can see how they're all interlinked. And lastly, by those three things working together, performance is ultimately improved. Because she is healthy, she has a good level of fitness, she exercises regularly, she is able to perform to the best of her ability. So hopefully you can see how each one positively links with another in order to create a good level of performance, which is what it's all about. I've used another example here. This is Jamie Vardy. Hopefully you all know Jamie Vardy, uh, England international footballer. So starting at the top there, we look at Jamie Vardy's health. So you'd like to consider that he puts... Uh, his health first and foremost. By having a good level of health, he's then able to meet the demands of his environment, which is fitness. He regularly takes part in exercise in order to improve that fitness level. And ultimately, putting those three things together leads to a good level of performance. What we're also going to do now, however, is show you how each aspect can link negatively. Okay. So if we look at this individual here, clearly there's an issue with obesity and obesity can lead to serious physical health issues such as chronic heart disease, which is CHD, as well as significant emotional and social difficulties. So not feeling happy about yourself, which can lead to depression and socially not being able to interact with others or leave the house. As a result of those things, this individual is not able to meet the demands of their environment. So they're not able to get out of bed. They're not able to wash themselves. They're not able to go to work or attend school. As a result of that, exercise can become a real issue. Being overweight, not being able to meet the demands of your environment, exercise then becomes really difficult to access. And that creates a negative cycle. Unable to exercise, poor physical health, poor fitness. And obviously, as a result of those three things, this has significantly reduced any level of performance, whether it be performance in being able to tie his shoelaces, performance in being able to get out of bed and make a meal, and obviously he's clearly not going to be able to take part in any sport. So we've now shown you how it can both positively and negatively affect, and they all link together. Now, just two little um, important parts that you need to understand. When an individual contracts a disease through a lack of exercise, so this might be chronic heart disease, it could be diabetes, this is known as hypokinetic disease, okay, and it's obviously all attributed to a lack of exercise. When an individual's lifestyle lacks any sustained physical activity, so if you're not doing the government recommended amount of activity each day, which is 60 minutes for people of your age, then you are said to be living a sedentary lifestyle, a lifestyle that lacks physical activity. And a lot of the time, leading a sedentary lifestyle will lead to hypokinetic disease being developed. Now, just as a quick point to note, I just want to show you these three individuals because it can actually be possible to be a top class elite sports star, but have issues with your health. So on the left hand side here, we have Sir Steve Redgrave, um, greatest ever Olympian to come out of Great Britain, five gold medals. But he was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, yet still went on to win all those gold medals. 
Lionel Messi, which some people argue the greatest footballer of uh, his generation, um, it's quite well known that he had a hormone deficiency, which stunted his growth. He received medical treatment to this, which would be impacting on his health, um, but he still went on to be a fantastic footballer. And lastly, here we have a, a top class international cricketer um, who had to drop out from playing international cricket due to anxiety and depression issues, which is obviously attributed to emotional health. But he was still one of the best international cricketers in the world at that time. So let's see if we know more and remember more. Can you accurately define what health, fitness, exercise and performance are? Are you able to break down each one of those components and discuss them in detail? And can you discuss how each one is linked to both positively and negatively affecting an individual's health, fitness, exercise and performance? Like I say, go back through this tutorial. Um, it's quite an in-depth one and I've gone through it relatively quickly. But make sure you go back through it so that you can confirm and solidify your knowledge and understanding of this topic area. Thank you. Goodbye.